What's up, guys? Welcome back to Newswave. So over the weekend, the talk around this new Nintendo Switch or the Switch Pro has really started to accelerate after Eurogamer corroborated Bloomberg's report that could be announced as soon as this week leading into E3. And now we're starting to see different listings for this device pop up on online retailers. We're going to go over that here today. Also, we are going to be talking about Sega and What's one of the strangest pre-E3 leaks I think I've ever seen? As it appears that they have accidentally leaked out the title for the new 3D Sonic game coming next year in a press release, and then they hope that, I guess, no one saw it. And we're also going to take, an, take a look at an updated list of all the different companies, the vendors, exhibitors that are going to be participating in this year's E3. Guys, if you enjoy these videos, make sure that like button helps out a ton. And if you're new here to the Spawn Wave channel, make sure you subscribe down below. And we're going to start today with Destruction all Stars, it's a game that was dropped in the PlayStation Plus like right away when it came out earlier this year, but I haven't really seen a lot of people continue to talk about it after it initially came out. And we have an update now in a, in a developer update on their blog that talks about, I think, issues with the overall population playing online for this game. We can head over here and we can see it says online bots with a community the size of Destruction All-Star spread out across the world. We do have peak times and low times of player activity for online matchmaking. We want to ensure that matches are filled to capacity with as many real players as possible, but when missing X amount of players, when queuing for a match, AI bots will take the remaining places. The exception to this is Blitz, as a competitive mode, Blitz will never feature bots. So you typically don't bring in bots to fill spots of real humans online if uh, if the game's doing well. It does feel like people kind of forgot about this game already. It was a good move for them to drop it into PlayStation Plus because I don't think a lot of people were jumping out of their seat to go spend $70 for this game. But even that, I just don't think there's enough content in the game now. And I feel like a lot of people are looking at this and saying, they made it halfway to what a lot of people wanted, which was a full twist of metal. Also, we do have an update for Knockout City, specifically around kind of the trial period that they were doing, which is basically like 10 days after launch, they were going to let everyone just try the game for free. Turns out they're going to be extending that a bit further. We can see this here on Twitter where they say block party is over, but new players to Knockout City can still start brawling for free. If your friends are just joining us, they'll be able to play for free and level up to street rank 25 before purchasing the game. That's also enough time to teach them to pass the ball. If you pass the ball in the game, the, the ball will essentially be more powerful when you throw it faster and all these different things. There, there's legit strategy in this game. And you know what? I'm enjoying it a lot more than I thought I would. I actually find myself at least getting in a couple of matches like like every night almost with this. I'm playing on the Xbox, but it has full crossplay, so you can literally play with whoever uh, in this game depending on what platform they're on. No problems there. And it's a lot better, like I said, than I thought it would be, but a lot of that had to do with... I'd say the overall cinematic and way they presented the game originally did not do this game justice. I would certainly give it a try, and it looks like you can try it out till level 25, which is actually quite a bit of time, to be honest, to try to check this game out and see if it's for you. Oh, and we had talked previously about Scarlet Nexus and the demo that dropped on the Xbox. Looks like it's now available on the PlayStation 4 and the PlayStation 5, so you can go check that out. This game is going to be coming out in like three or four weeks anyway. And to be honest, I think I'm just ready for the game to come out. I tried out the demo and I did like it. I, I think visually it's very interesting looking. Some of the different like ultimate finisher moves they have are really cool. The way that they're kind of animated and drawn out. And the gameplay itself, more action JRPG, obviously. They have the skill trees and all these things to go with it. So you can progress your characters along. The demo's aren't super long. There's two different characters you can play as, and it's, it's pretty quick, to be honest. So certainly worth downloading the checkout. I believe on the PlayStation, it's about eight gigabytes, so it won't take long at all to try out and see what you think of it ahead of its uh, June 25th release. And guys, with some of the quick news out of the way, let's get into the bigger stuff. Let's start right away with what's probably the hottest topic right now is there's a lot of anticipation for Nintendo to make an announcement around this new Switch revision, which wouldn't be there if Bloomberg didn't put their report out. In fact, you know what's interesting is if that report was not put out saying that it was imminent, the announcement that is, we would all be kind of hanging out. Let's say they were going to be announcing it this week, like tomorrow on Tuesday, just as an example. It would completely take a, catch everyone off guard, really. That would be an interesting day online. But now everyone's kind of just on Switch Pro Watch, just waiting, watching Nintendo's Twitter account, seeing, okay, when are they usually scheduled to tweet things out? We're going to keep an eye on it to see if they're going to tell us 
uh, about uh, about this Switch Pro or if they're just gonna tweet something else out about, I don't know, Metopia. But it does look like we're starting to see different listings pop up online on places like Amazon. We can see this here. This was posted up by Wario64, but it does look like everyone was kind of clipping this and posting it online as a lot of people started to spot this over on uh, Amazon Mexico. We can see new Nintendo Switch Pro, it's obviously a placeholder as there's no picture at all, no real description either. It's just kind of hanging out, I guess, waiting for the information to show up online and be filled. And hey, you know what? New Nintendo Switch Pro, that that sounds like something Nintendo would do, doesn't it? I, I don't think that's the name of it. I don't even think it's gonna be Switch Pro. I think more than likely it's gonna be new Nintendo Switch because that just, that sounds like something Nintendo would do. Still sticking to Super Switch or Super Nintendo Switch, I think that'd be really cool. Or hey, if they gotta do it, Nintendo Switch with Wii, you know, where, where the, the Switch part would be. Any, anyway, this is not too surprising to see Amazon do a placeholder for something that very well could be getting announced. The fact that Bloomberg reported it and then, uh, then we see Eurogamer follow that up and then we see other people online talking about it. I have a feeling that uh, Nintendo, it's probably hit their marketing and they're getting ready to, I guess, make a big push this week or leading into E3, I guess, the following week, just kind of talking about this Switch revision. How much of it would they have to reveal? They don't necessarily have to say pricing or release date yet, but based on what's been going around is that developers and publishers are looking to show off Switch Pro versions of some of these games, third-party games specifically, it seems, at E3, so they would kind of need that to at least be announced. Otherwise, it's gonna be real awkward when they flash up like the new Nintendo Switch logo without it being announced. So while it was being thrown around that up oh, there it is, the Switch Pro has basically been leaked out from an Amazon listing. This happens quite often. It doesn't always turn into something, but I mean, yeah, we've seen these kind of listings show up and then like a week later, something gets announced for it, but We'll see with this one. Now, I also had it pointed out to me that Walmart Canada uh, was not only alluding to the idea of the Switch Pro being announced soonish, but then they also threw up this placeholder here for Metroid. And yeah, I mean, most likely Metroid, a 2D Metroid is getting announced at E3. Once again, a placeholder, but remember, I feel like most of you know this. Uh, whenever it says December 31st for the release date, that is definitely a placeholder release date. They're not going to release a game on December 31st, like the last day of this year. I mean, Metroid's probably gonna come out uh, this uh, this fall, maybe like a September or October release. But yeah, 2D Metroid is basically expected at this point. So it's not surprising to see someone like Walmart Canada throw up a placeholder just to be ready for it. We're also seeing kind of the community have some fun with these rumors and the idea of Nintendo's naming schemes. And like, for example, this here post up where they basically just took all of the logos and like new Super Nintendo Switch series Series X, U Pro, One, Nexcel, and, and so on there. So we're all kind of hanging out, waiting. We'll see if anything pops up. If you were curious about some of the other, I guess, rumors and leaks that were getting out there, I did a video over the weekend kind of going over some of the features that apparently were put out there from manufacturers. So make sure you check that one out if you're curious. Next up, let's talk about Sega and apparently them leaking the name of the new 3D Sonic game that's set for 2022 themselves in a press release. Now, Sega's an interesting company. We talked about how they were surprised that Persona 4 Golden sold really well on Steam despite it being stuck on the Vita since it came out and everyone asking for Persona to go to other platforms and Sega was shocked that it like jumped to the top of Steam sales charts. Like, wow, like that surprised you. But here we are now with Sega making another odd mistake. We can head over here to Eurogamer. Apparently the press release originally read announcing new console experiences, Sonic Colors Ultimate and Sonic Rangers. Further details on Netflix, Sonic Prime, mobile news, mo musical events, and much more. Apparently, according to Eurogamer, they then updated the press release saying, announcing new console experiences, Sonic Colors Ultimate, and further details on Netflix's Sonic Prime, mobile news, musical events, and more. Eurogamer was told this morning that the original press release we received is an older version that was shared incorrectly, but there's no further information on Sonic Rangers right now. So there we go. I guess it really is called Sonic Rangers. It was found in like the metadata that they had Sonic Rangers all over like the video for the, the Sonic 2022 teaser. And once again, this lines up with a 4chan post that mentioned focus group testing over a year ago for a game 
called Sonic Rangers that seemed like an open world Sonic game, like I said, with uh, exploration similar to Ubisoft games that are climbing towers and, and I guess revealing parts of the map. It's at least different sounding for a Sonic game, but remember, focus groups, like they, they could just show you any kind of game and see what your reaction is to it. So we kind of figure, okay, this is most likely going to be in the realm of an open world Sonic game because of what was said there to line up with the Sonic Rangers title. But I mean, people may have not liked it. They may have said, hey, I, I, the, the open world Sonic game isn't working. And they usually take heavy feedback from these focus groups and play tests to kind of shape the game. So what was described there, like from, they said like over a year ago, may not necessarily be what we get with this game. But you know what? I'm at least interested to see what they could do with an open world 3D Sonic game. It can't be any worse than like Sonic Forces, right? That's that's sort of at least the way I'm looking at it. The optimistic way that I'm looking at it is it it can't get much worse. Next up, let's talk about E3 and an updated list now for all of the different companies that'll be participating in this online event. And we can see this here. This apparently was sent out through different emails for E3. And you know what? It looks it looks almost like a tier list that they have set up here with Pinnacle sponsors being at the top, that being Nintendo and Xbox. I kind of assume this is mostly in order of like the amount of money that was thrown into E3 from the companies. So they kind of broke them up in that fashion with Nintendo and Xbox obviously at the top there. Then we have premier sponsors with Ubisoft, Square, and Verizon. You know, I'm really looking forward to Square's presentation, by the way, at E3, especially after talks of that Souls-like Final Fantasy. I don't think anyone was expecting that. So who knows what other surprises Square has in store for us here. And we have feature sponsors, which would be Take-Two and Razer. And then eh, it gets a little bit more like all over the place. Elite sponsors having Freedom Games alongside of Capcom. Showcase sponsors with uh, WB and Sega. And uh, we have 24 Entertainment and the Television Amico. And then, then we get into exhibitors and it's like, it's all over the place. Like Otterbox Gaming is there, which would be more for like accessories that they're selling. Of course, like Turtle Beach, Arcade 1-Up. You know, I am curious to see what arcade cabinets we could see from arcade one up because there was a rumored simpsons cabinet that was making the rounds and i would certainly buy that if that does get announced so looking forward to that and then uh, we have norton gaming in like is that f tier like participating company if we go with like s through f i think norton gaming was relegated to f tier which now i think about it i don't really know anyone who still uses norton like antivirus security suite or any of that. If, I feel like whenever people would bring in their PC to get fixed and they said it was slow, we would turn it on. There'd be a big pop-up right in the middle of the desktop. That's like renew your Norton subscription so we can make sure all the viruses are kept away. And it's like, yeah, it's working. Obviously the PC's nice and slow. So all the viruses must be staying away. I, let me know if you use Norton down below or if it's really changed a lot, but Norton Gaming, I don't know, do people put gaming and Norton right next to each other? Uh, anyway, it looks like E3 is, is gonna be a pretty good show overall. And like I said, the big company that I'm keeping an eye on outside of obviously Nintendo and Xbox is Square. I just have a feeling they have, they have some interesting stuff to show for us in a week or two. And in our last bit of news, let's talk about Far Cry 6 because we did have the first gameplay revealed in a trailer online. And for the most part, the game looks really good. I think a lot of people saw the character models versus the environments and the character models looked more last gen, whereas the environments that they showed looked incredible at times. Like when they're going through like kind of, kind of the woods and you see some of the foliage moving along, along with the trees, it looked really good. But it does look like they also have last gen systems still in mind here. And it does sound kind of like the cyberpunk effect all over again. We'll head over here to VGC where they say like CD Projekt's game, Far Cry 6, an ambitious sandbox plan to release across two console generations. However, Ubisoft Toronto's David Grivel told VGC that the studio was being really, really cautious about not abandoning PlayStation 4 and Xbox One with this title. I wonder why that would be outside of obviously the larger install size. Well, they saw what happened with the, uh, the Cyberpunk release on the Xbox One and the PlayStation 4, and they made mention that they would be showing gameplay for those platforms before the game comes out. Probably a, a good idea there, as a lot of people felt like uh, like they were lied to with the PS4 and the Xbox One release of Cyberpunk in the condition that that came out in. But from what I saw of Far Cry 6, I, it looks fun. I mean, the biggest thing here, of course, are the different mechanics in the game and, uh, and the map size, I'm sure, are different things that people are curious about. But I think the gameplay loop is going to be the biggest part for me, and some of the things they showed look 
pretty interesting. And of course, the visuals, it being 4K60 on next-gen systems, I'm sure it's going to be one of those games that is going to be cross-gen, but it's still really going to take advantage of a lot of the features on the PS5 and the Xbox Series console. So looking forward to that one. And before we go to the comment of the day, we'll take a look at the poll that I posted up yesterday, where I asked, do you think Nintendo will announce a Switch revision ahead of E3. Hey, look at that. 57% said, yes, there's too much talk from insiders around it. 26% said, no, Nintendo will announce it later in the year. And 18% said there is no Switch Pro revision coming. And you know what? I still think that's, it's always a possibility. That Nintendo just does not have anything planned. It would be very strange because they revise all of their handhelds, for example, consistently every generation, multiple times. So, the idea of them not revising the Switch to continue to boost sales as they go forward would be weird, but the idea of them announcing it so far in advance, if it's coming out in, say, October, and they announce it, like, this week, that would put them over four months out from release, and that would be something not typical for Nintendo who likes to announce a system like the a Switch Pro revision, for example, or like the DS Lite or the 3DS XL like a month before it comes out, not so that they don't mess up any of their overall sales for the system. So I guess we'll see, at least we know in the next week, week and a half, if that Bloomberg and Eurogamer report are correct, we should see some sort of new system from Nintendo. And we'll finish up with the comment of the day as you're seeing here. This is from Duck saying, Sonic shows a logo, not enough info, very disappointing. Dragon Quest shows a logo, wow, this is an exciting announcement. I think the biggest thing here is just how it, different those those series are right now, whether it's a 3D Sonic game or the Dragon Quest series. The Dragon Quest series has historically been great. Dragon Quest XI is an awesome game. If you're a fan of JRPGs, you gotta play it. Or you, you probably already have, but if you haven't, you need to go check it out because it is a very, very good game. Whereas 3D Sonic games, last we have Sonic Forces, so there's no confidence in that series right now. And you figure Sega, if they wanted to really show this game, they would have come out and been like, look, this is all the different things we've done here. This game is going to be way better than any of these other 3D Sonic games you've had. Instead, they drop a teaser that just said 2022. And remember, they didn't even give us the logo or title for the game. They accidentally did that in the press release, whereas at least Dragon Quest said, okay, Dragon Quest 12, it's going to take a while to get done. But based on the history we have with these Dragon Quest games, people are going to be excited over a logo and the explanation that it's going to be a more mature Dragon Quest game. Because to be honest, the Dragon Quest series has earned that, whereas the 3D Sonic series has not. And ladies and gentlemen, that's going to do here for Newswave. If you enjoyed this video, guys, hit that like button. It really helps out. If not, hit the dislike. Leave comments down below about everything we talked about here. Today, there's this Switch Pro being talked about all over the place right now. Are you expecting it to be announced this week? And if so, go ahead and drop your prediction as to which day you think it'll be announced. Then what about the whole thing around Sonic Rangers? Do you think Sega can actually figure out a big open world style 3D Sonic game like that, and then E3. You saw the list of companies. Which one are you looking forward to the most? Thanks, guys, for watching, and I'll see you next time.